Welcome to this video lecture. This is Mark Scythian, FAA licensed aerospace technician, airframe, power plant, and avionics certified. The date today is July 5th, 2016. In this particular spoken lecture video, we will be discussing the true power output of the turbofan jet engine, part of the gas turbine engine series here. The turbofan jet engine is kind of an improvement of the turbo jet. What, how this works is that you have two independently rotating spools, each with a set of compressor blades connected to a set of turbine blades. So all gas turbine engines, they're always going to have a high speed gas producer spool called the N2, like N is in November 2. And uh, so you have the, we'll start with the N2 spool. You have a set of compressor blades connected to a set of turbine blades. And the core of the spool is a hollow shaft. So this is one spool that rotates independently at high speeds. In between the compressor and the turbine blades, you have a combustion chamber with dilution holes and a combustor can. Okay, and then through that high speed hollow shaft is a solid shaft, which then incorporates a low speed compressor connected to a large fan. And then at the other side of the solid shaft, you have a set of turbine blades but more stages of turbine blades, and I'll explain why. So now when the engine is uh, started for initial compression of the high-speed uh, compressor, the air is drawn in, and the airflow is now being compressed, and its temperature increased. Meanwhile, the low-speed N November N1 spool consists of the large fan, the low-speed compressor, and the low-speed turbine rotating in a solid shaft. Eventually, they react to the vacuum that's drawn in by the high-speed compressor and turbine rotating with the starter, and they catch up. So the N1 and N2 have to be rotating relatively close to each other before you can light the engine. When you get enough airflow and heat of air compression, uh, of course, the starter is also linked to the spark igniter on initial startup. When you get enough of uh, RPM and airflow, then you can introduce fuel into the high temperature air with the assistance of a spark igniter. And then when the gas, uh, when the ignition lights off, the fuel lights off, it then blasts against the high speed turbine, which drives the high speed compressor and then starts to increase the amount of vacuum to the low speed compressor. But more importantly, the hot gases that spill off the high speed turbine are then absorbed by the low-speed turbine, which then drives the large fan and the low-speed compressor. So you got to keep the starter on and let the airflow go through, and you have to have enough uh, uh, compression and airflow before you light it, because then you might get a hot start, as is true with any turbine engine. But let's say you've done that properly, and the turbine inlet temperature is uh, sufficiently lower. It's going to spike at initial light off, but as you keep the starter going, the airflow moves through it and then the TIT drops. So you're doing good. So when you hit about 48, 49% of the power of both spools, then you can, uh, you'll suddenly, real, you'll suddenly uh, see that the spools light off and increase in RPM. Then you can cut the starter and the spark and then uh, everything self accelerates to an idle of 65%. So now you have the, uh, turbofan uh, lit. See, the thing about the turbofan, it's going, to con it's going to conserve kinetic energy better than a turbo jet because even though the turbofan is propulsion engine, you're using most of the hot gases off the gas producer spool. You're using that thermal energy to drive another set of turbine blades so you can convert most of that hot gas into torque and brake horsepower to drive that large fan. What actually comes out of the core exhaust and hot gas is very little on the turbofan jet engine. So you basically have a turboprop with a propeller with more blades, fixed pitch, and then a duct around it. Now the duct on the turbofan jet engine 
is designed to take a large volume of mass airflow that's cold and then bypass it around the core through a cold air fan duct, which then also constricts towards its exit nozzle. So you have a stream of cold air flowing around a stream of hot air. So of course the turbo fan is quieter, the uh, air being accelerated is close or equal to the outside temperature, and so the kinetic efficiency is much greater. You have a large fan being driven by the small core and most of the hot gases are converted into torque, not hot gas propulsion thrust like with the turbojet. So below the speed of sound, close to the speed of sound transonic, this is when the true power output of the turbo fan is most efficient. Now in terms of the propulsion aspect of it, even though it is a ducted propeller drawing in a large amount of air, low RPM, high torque, high blade pitch, you're swallowing up all this large mass airflow, and then you need the torque to actually compress that cold air around the core in the fan duct, which has a constricting nozzle at its exhaust. So remember, thrust alone is not going to tell you much. You also have to know the jet velocity involved, because if you unducted that propeller, you would still get a lot of thrust, but you would not get the jet velocity without that cold air duct to squeeze the cold air and accelerate it out. So you would be limited in speed. So the turbo fan is designed to accelerate a very large amount of cold air to higher jet velocities than an open propeller would. And so the true power output of the turbo fan is also under the same uh, propulsion physics of finding out what the static thrust output is of both the cold air fan nozzle and the core hot gas nozzle. So let's say it's 80,000 pounds of static thrust. You would multiply that times the gravitational acceleration on Earth, 32.2 feet per second squared, and then divide it by the maximum mass airflow of the entire engine. And then you would get the jet velocity average out of both the fan cold air nozzle and the core hot gas nozzle. From that point, all you'd have to do is subtract the forward speed in feet per second from the average jet velocity, and then you would be able to take that value and multiply it times the mass airflow divided into gravitational acceleration. This will allow you to calculate the net thrust or the dynamic thrust. This is only applicable when the engine is moving in flight, not when it's at rest. And then you take the ratio of uh, the aircraft speed divided into 375 times the net thrust. That will allow you to get the thrust horsepower, and then you can use that as output power and divide it into the fuel consumption, uh, convert it into mechanical power equivalent, like one BTU per minute output is 17.6 watts, and uh, the heat energy content of kerosene jet fuel, 18,730 BTU per pound, with a fuel density of 6.75 pounds per U.S. gallon. So you can actually get the efficiency out of that methodology. But the only time the compressor horsepower becomes relevant is that static thrust testing, because then that's where all the power is going. You're not having any oncoming airflow. You're holding the engine at rest and doing static thrust testing only to get the jet velocity number. Uh, so the turbo fan is propulsion, but it's kind of part turbo shaft driving a propeller that's ducted and then part hot gas. So it is kind of similar to the turbo prop, but it has uh, a ducting system designed to make it completely propulsion based. So the true power output is going to have a higher efficiency at uh, transonic speeds than you would a jet or a turbo jet or a turbo prop would travel most efficiently around 300 miles per hour. So that covers the true power output. Now, in terms of getting compressor horsepower, you have to, that's the power loss to keep the engine running. That is a function of squeezing amount of mass air and increasing its temperature. So you don't get to keep that. But the most important thing is, is that you can use that hot gas flow for other purposes, aside from just accelerating it, accelerating it out to the atmosphere. You can also put a second set of uh, compressor or compressor and turbine blades, a second spool, to take that jet blast and then convert it into torque to drive the large propeller or fan inside of a duct. 
So you can take advantage of the hot gas discharge, that thermal energy, and convert it to mechanical power to drive a fan. And since the pressure is so high, just like with a piston engine, the pressure is higher on the piston head. Well, the pressure is higher in the turbine engine because of heat of air compression, turbine driving and compressor on the uh, low speed turbines, allowing a lot of torque to be developed. So all you have to do is set up a fixed pitch uh, propeller fan with high pitch, and then you can rotate it at low RPM with a lot of torque, low RPM, high torque, and then draw in a large amount of air and also have the power to compress that cold air and accelerate it out. So that's the true power dynamics of the turbofan jet engine, and it's most efficient right below the speed of sound. That's why almost all airliners that are modern, you will not see the jet anymore. You will see the turbofan. Thanks for watching this video and have a great day.